Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the UTC's virtual open evening. Again, uh, sadly, we find ourselves in a situation where we can't welcome you into our building, uh, and instead we're going to do this virtually. Hopefully, if the situation changes as the academic year progresses, there will be an opportunity for you to come in and have a look around the building. So um, I get the easy job today. I get to, to set us underway, talking a little bit about the history of the UTC, but really focusing now on, on who we are, what we are, uh, and why a UTC might be the right place for, for your child or for you to come to. So the UTC is now in its sixth year of operation. Um, I fortunately have been here since, since day one, initially as the vice principal uh, and became principal four years ago. So this is my fourth year uh, as head teacher now. Uh, and the school has undergone significant change in the last four years, um, not least welcoming year nine students two years ago. Uh, and obviously you'll be aware that we welcomed our first ever year seven cohort this September. Uh, when I took over, the school had just over 200 students. Uh, we've now got about 430 students on roll and we will be at capacity at 520 by September of next year. So a school that is moving in the right direction, a school that is uh, always forward thinking and innovative in its direction. And I think that the best way to start is to look at our vision. Um, and when we talk about our vision, we're talking about expanding the boundaries of learning with STEM at our heart. Um, and, and it's really important that we will keep coming back to those STEM subjects. We are the school of choice for STEM in Peterborough and the surrounding areas. We are the only school which has a STEM focused curriculum. And um, there are lots of subjects which we do not study here at the UTC. And it's as important for you to know which subjects we do study as it is for you to know which subjects we don't study. Um, and I know as my as my colleagues come on and talk about our curriculum offer, uh, and hopefully you've had a look at our website and our prospectus, you'll have a very, very clear idea about the emphasis and the importance we put on those STEM subjects. And um, our mission statement here is to give students that knowledge, skills and behaviours to help them move on to the next stage in, the, in their career, be that education, be that training or be that employment. Um, we aspire to develop compassionate, caring, confident and kind human beings that actively contribute to their community um, who care about their place in society. We want our students to be the best possible version of themselves. Um, and we do that through an exciting curriculum, through uh, an unrivaled careers and employer based program, which again, hopefully if you've looked at our prospectus, you'll know already a little bit about. And some of my colleagues will talk to you in a bit more detail about what our curriculum looks like. And um, fundamentally, STEM is at the heart of everything we do. This is something that, that starts in year seven with expeditionary learning. Um, and we've already held an open evening very specifically focusing on year seven. So this is more looking at years nine through 13. Um, but starting with that expeditionary learning, moving into a bit of a hybrid year in year nine, when we start to look at that GCSE preparedness, obviously year 10 in year 11, focusing on GCSE studies, and then that, or that transition into our sixth form, ready to study A-levels and level three technical qualifications. We have a really strong welfare and pastoral setup here, which is underpinned by something called crew, which is the way in which we do form time. Again, small groups, every child has a champion, every child has an advocate, every child speaks every day, every child is heard every day. And again, that, that crew, that underpins everything we do. And we're really, really keen to make sure that if we get that right and every child feels like they're heard and every child feels like their voice matters, then actually the other stuff we can get right as well. Really, really focusing on no child being left behind and making sure there are progression routes for all children at all stages of their learning. We have some, some very solid character values that we look for on our young students and we try and develop. So we talk about respect, readiness, responsibility and resilience. You know, the, these are displayed around school. They're displayed on our, on our PowerPoint slides when we teach and when we present. And um, you'll also see the, the core sponsors um, the, the seven or eight core sponsors that we work with. Um, and these guys are in the building all the time. Every day is an interview at the UTC because you don't know who's walking around the building. You don't know which visitor I've got in. You don't know who's going to come into your lesson and what opportunities might fall on your lap. So we're really, really pleased to be working with our core sponsors. And um, you'll also be aware that in, um, in recent months, we have merged with the Cambridge Meridian Academies Trust or CMAT. Um, and again, when we looked at the options to merge with an academy trust, we looked at the values that CMAT had at their heart 
value in people, high quality learning environments, the pursuit of excellence, extending the boundaries of learning and an achievement for all. And they were absolutely aligned with everything that as a UTC, we always spoke about. And if you go back and find the, uh, the virtual open evenings from last year, you'll hear me talking about an ethic of excellence, positive relationships, high quality teaching and learning, and again, STEM being at the heart of all we do. So when we looked at the trusts, we, we felt that there was, a, there was an authentic uh, connection with CMAT and their values, and we're really pleased to be, to be working with our colleagues at CMAT. So um, again, you're gonna hear from lots of colleagues today uh, about various aspects of our curriculum, and then I will come back on at the end, and we will have a short Q&A session, uh, but again, I will be giving you my, uh, my email. So if there are questions that you think of after the presentation, please do feel free to, to get in touch. Always happy to have conversations via email, even more happy to have conversations on the phone uh, and ultimately, hopefully, face-to-face uh, -face once, uh, once the situation in the local area allows that to take place. So uh, I hope you find it informative. I hope you find it um, interesting uh, and I look forward to, to speaking to you and answering your questions at the end. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Beth Holman and I'm head of Key Stage 3. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we do in Year 9 um, from the, all of our curriculum that is shared and also our new crew mentoring session. The school day is exactly the same as followed in all year groups. Uh, lunchtime is subject to change just so we can make sure that all of our students are getting through the canteen as swiftly as possible. We have our crew sessions. This is a replacement um, of the mentoring sessions that the other year groups um, have. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with you. So the crew curriculum, the ethos is we get crew right, we get everything right. So we've got Mindful Monday, Tranquil Tuesday, Wise Wednesday, Thoughtful Thursday and Flexible Friday. An important element of the structure of crew are the daily morning check ins. The, our students have these every day with a crew leader, which allows students to all have a voice and help to create a positive start to every crew session. Where possible, students in our school sit or stand in circles instead of having tables to create that barrier. We sit and hear each other uh, without the inter interference of furniture, and a circle allows the crew members to be equally vulnerable, joyfully connected, and supported, supportive of one another. Mindful Monday is an opportunity for students to be reflective as well as active to share their weekend experiences during the crew check in and then conduct activities which either focus on giving back to the community through service learning or personal personal mindfulness. This is a great opportunity for myself and my crew leads to have that extra time with our students to make sure that we are not only there as a member of staff, but also can help them with their welfare if needed. Tranquil Tuesday, its purpose is to create a strong academic focus on the goal of developing lifelong readers. This goal, while primarily addressed in academic classes, has a special home in crew. Therefore, Tranquil Tuesdays is a time used each week for literature circles and structured discussions on a text or the opportunity for students to independently read. A crew leader will confer with students as they read, encourage exploration of new genres and monitor student progress in region age assessments. At the moment, this is a really good time for our students to try and find which genre of books they they thoroughly enjoy. It's pushing their boundaries with their with their imaginations and making sure that they can try and find a love for reading. Wise Wednesdays are a time for students to reflect on and develop the skills they need to succeed in education and beyond into employment. Wise Wednesdays is also a time to focus on careers, essential employability skills. At appropriate points in the year, Wise Wednesdays will be used to reflect on the academic progress. We also have Thoughtful Thursdays. This is where we have a look at the wider world and, and the current affairs that we currently share with our students. It's to help students understand the importance of people, events and issues in the news, encouraging students to explore and learn about the news and to pay attention to the news they see and hear outside of school. On Friday, it's Flexible Friday. This allows for me and my team to be able to catch up on any activities, or this is where we hold our community meetings. The community meeting is instead of what the traditional style of an assembly would would be. The community meetings are also again held in a circle or horseshoe shape. This is where we can still discuss, discuss larger matters with the whole of the year group and be able to reflect and discuss difficult matters if if they arise, but also 
allow students to be able to put forward their ideas and opinions and be able to have, as, as stated, a community and a sense of belonging as all together. The curriculum, English, maths are both four hours. We've got science at six hours, PE, they have two hours, and then they have PSHE of one hour. The additional for year nine is they have something called HPQ, which I will discuss in a second. And we also have something called expeditionary learning. HPQ is a higher project qualification and it gives us it gives the students a level two qualification, which is equivalent to half a GCSE. The higher project qualification requires students to study a topic area which extends or expands their learning in an appropriate area of study. And the qualification helps students to as follows to undertake an autonomous piece of work, develop as inquisitive and independent students, be inspired and enthused by new areas of methods of study, explore the experimental learning process and further opportunities to plan and review their own learning, take responsibility for their own learning and develop transferable core life and study skills, and the use of ICT and appropriate technologies with confidence. Here are some of the questions that can be used. Um, so we've got some that cover all different types of topics. So is asteroid mining possible and will it become a reality? We've got other things. How does a new trainer design come to the market? These are normally based on things that the students are thoroughly passionate about. Um, and we feel like this really, really helps to get their HPQ qualification. Now going on to expeditionary learning. It's an eight week rotation of 24 lessons and it covers the following subjects. We've got art, architecture, business, computer science, engineering design, engineering manufacture, geography and product design. Here is some of the expeditionary learning that has happened so far. So we've got art, so historic modern Britain, and we've also got product design, looking at jails and, and different development through the history. This will help to make informed choices for their GCSEs. Having experienced an exposition in that subject, they will then be able to be given a guiding question. They will then use different ways to answer these, whether that be practical, teacher led, group discussion or with media and sponsor resources. We're then left with the enrichment programme, which covers the following. So you've got independent student study support, sports, science club, school magazine, botany and beekeeping, beekeeping, technical drawing, machine skills, coding and Raspberry Pi, Sea Cadets, Royal Navy Challenge, Junior Field Gun Challenge and Green Power. These are just a selection of the enrichments that are going to be happening over the next couple of months. Thank you very much for listening. Hello and welcome to a brief overview at Key Stage 4 at GPUTC. My name is Mr Aldred and I'm Head of Key Stage 4. The core subjects that we um, deliver at GPUTC are biology, chemistry, physics, as part of our three awards in, within the sciences. So those subjects are taken separately and the students will get a grade for each individual science. Alongside this, part of the core subjects are English language and English literature and maths. Part of the offer at GPU to C, we offer option subjects and specialisms. Being a STEM school, we're focused on engineering. We offer four specialisms. Students have to choose one of the following specialisms to complement their core subjects and an option subject. They can choose from architecture, engineering manufacture, engineering design, and product design. All of these subjects are focused on either designing or creating objects or items which can be used or the actual design behind it. So for example, in architecture, you'll do planning, designing of buildings, potential extensions, and then you may be able to model them. Part of engineering, manufacturing, engineering design, you do similar tasks where you design products, 
will design parts of products and look at specific um, drawings to be able to get the design process moving. And then if you do manufacture, you actually produce some of these products and then do analysis based on it. Product design is more about looking at the design of products themselves, making, uh, looking at innovation, looking at um, the style, uh, being able to draw and identify new, um, new designs to then use in your own design of a product to take forward. You will then make prototypes of those products, whether that's out of different types of materials and you'll learn the materials as you go. Alongside our specialisms and our core, as already mentioned, you will get to choose an option subject. You will also get to choose one of the following of art and design, computer science, business, or geography. At the heart of GPUTC is employer engagement. So students within year 10 will um, get to options to go on work experience. And this is normally done over a two week block where they will find an employer and they will go and learn the skills that they'll need um, to embed themselves ready for work in the real world. Here is an example of some of our um, employers in engage engagement, um, which come into school um, through our different processes through careers fairs and also um, within lessons on occasions to help show students the um, application of the knowledge that they're learning in the real world. So just a few examples here of our sponsors and our, our, our key employee engagement come from like ZTech, Kia, Baker Perkins, Perkins, Anglian Mortar, and um, University of the Ang Anglian Ruskin and Peterborough College. Students have, um, of many different age groups have gone on, um, whether they've left at the end of Key Stage 4, at the end of the sixth form studies, to go and work for some of these co companies. It's a good opportunity to meet the kind of um, employers and people from these companies before you get go into the working world. A part of our offer at GBUDC, we also offer enrichment activities. Enrichment activities vary. They um, are generally um, focus on STEM, um, so science, technology, engineering or maths, but not all are. We, all, we run um, ones which are like, for example, the green power car we've done historically, um, to extra engineering lessons where you can use some of the tools and machinery in the school, um, to sessions where on debating, on film, and other activities that staff are passionate about and have a knowledge about. These activities often run in period six and enable students to access um, extra curricular activities which enhance their education, things that they can put on a CV and show employers that they have done these extra little bits and show how they are different to other students. Alongside um, these, students also have to undertake um, PE lessons and they also have weekly PSHE lessons. So physical health, social education, where they discuss a range of topics from healthy eating to sexual con contraception to, to drugs and alcohol awareness. Thank you for listening to a brief overview of Key Stage 4 GPUTC. Please feel free to um, let us know if you have any questions. Um, just a reminder, my name is Sean Aldred, and you can uh, contact me at saldred at gputc.org. Thank you for listening. Hello, and welcome to our sixth form section of the presentation. I'm Charlotte Kennedy, and I'm the head of sixth form here at the UTC. Firstly, I want to thank you for taking the time to find out some more about our sixth form and the offer that we provide. Please note that we will be sending out a supporting presentation containing more information about individual courses that I will discuss. But should you wish to find out more information about the application process itself, an email address can be found on the final slide. It's a big decision to choose a sixth form, especially if that means moving from your current school. As important as it is to hear from STAR, we equally value and respect the students' thoughts. Here are some of the key points that our Key Stage 5 students mentioned when asked what they like most about GPUTC sixth form. For me, the key points that contribute to student success are the smaller class sizes, student and staff commitment, and student conduct and attitude towards learning. It's fantastic as staff to hear such positive comments from our Key Stage 5 students. 
Before selecting A-level options, I advise students to work in reverse of the requirements that they need for their chosen occupations. This can be a daunting task, so I provided some inspiration in the form of some impressive destinations secured by some of our previous Key Stage 5 students. To further guide students, I will always discuss destinations during student interviews and work back from there to support A-level selections. This discussion tends to support students with their A-level subject choices, whilst considering future destinations and life beyond the UTC. I remind students that any decisions that are made during interviews are not set in stone and will be discussed further on GCSE Results Day before a final timetable is produced in September. Of course, grades are important in any sixth form, but at GPETC, we pride ourselves on the destinations that students secure when they complete their journey through education and into the world of work. Here are just a few of the apprenticeship opportunities that Year 13 secured last academic year. I'm proud to say that most of these are with our employer sponsors. As you can see, I've included the fantastic grades achieved by those students. There were over 50,000 undergraduate courses at more than 395 providers in the UK. With all that choice, it's important that students select the right options at sixth form. Here are some more of the exciting degrees that last year's cohort have started this September. This demonstrates the opportunities that have come from the selection of A-level subjects that we offer here at the UTC. So to get started, I want to set out what we offer at GPUTC sixth form. And the first offer is a two year level three pathway, which is a natural progression into level three study. Students can select from the following options, combining A-levels with technical qualifications. The subject blocks have been provided on the applications manager, so students can work through a combination of subjects to suit their interests. As part of the interview process, I talk through student choices and guide students to further reading around these subjects. As previously mentioned, all subjects are explained in supporting presentation that will be sent out to you. These are the current option blocks that run this academic year. This is a guideline to provide a rough idea of the courses that we offer, but is subject to change with varying factors. There are over 35 slides that you will be sent after this presentation that will explain a little more about each subject, why you might want to take it and what opportunities it could lead to in the future. Students can select up to four options with a minimum of three. That's one per option block. The BTEC Engineering Diploma is the equivalent of two A-levels, so must be selected from two blocks as they display on the application. The second offer is for students that did either not quite reach their full potential yet and need another opportunity to gain the vital qualifications to get them to the next step in their journey, or for those that would like to boost their GCSE scores, to gain access to some of our more challenging A-level options that we provide. These include maths, further maths, and the sciences. This is a three-year pathway where students spend the first year improving their GCSE grades to access level three courses. For the final two years, students select three options from the previous slide. Alongside the qualifications that they study, Level two students will have dedicated time on their timetables com to complete a one day placement each week. Many of the students that have taken this one year course have gone on to study level three courses with us the following year. Access to this course requires a portfolio of grade threes at GCSE. Here is some additional information from questions that I'm usually asked. To qualify as a full-time student, a minimum of three A-level equivalent subjects must be selected. Some students may wish to opt for four subject choices, but I advise a conversation with myself before choosing this option. A-levels in maths or physics require a grade six or above in GCSE.
At GPETC Sixth Form, we aim to offer an enriching curriculum inside and outside of the classroom. Here are just a few of the enrichment opportunities that our Key Stage 5 students have participated in, despite the disruption caused by COVID. We hope to continue these and add some more exciting opportunities next academic year. Students can now start to apply for Sixth Form at GPETC and the application can be accessed via our website. I hope that you now know more about our offer and hopefully look forward to speaking to students during the interview process. Thank you for your time. Hello there, my name is Katie and I am the Careers Coordinator here at Greater Peterborough UTC. Um, so, firstly I just want to say hello and I hope that you all like what you hear today. Um, but I'm essentially going to be talking about the careers and how we differ from other schools. Um, you know, and why we are so successful um, when it comes to like, our destinations data and the experience that our students have here um, when it comes to careers. Um, so a little bit about us, obviously this is a UTC, so essentially the whole reason why we were put here um, in the first place is to fill the gap um, that is within STEM, so that science, technology, engineering and maths. Most of the students that we have that come to this school have some sort of passion around STEM and if not they know that they enjoy certain subjects and they just want to come um, and explore that a little bit more with our sponsors, with the, within the curriculum and then also within the events that we um, hold, both employer engagement um, but also within careers. Um, so just like a standard school, we are expected to follow some Thing called the Gatsby benchmarks and um, so there are eight of those and included um, within those are things such as career um, fairs, interview skills, employability skills, work experience and so on. The thing that we do a little bit different here is we really do listen to the student's voice so um, as I am the careers coordinator every year I use our destinations platform called Unifrog um, and I will start capturing where our students intend to go when they leave us. I then use this information to deliver the different events throughout the year so when we're talking about careers fairs we make sure that we have like you know for, for instance every year we seem to have a different pattern this year we've got quite a lot of um, agricultural engineering that students want to take um, take up when they leave us so um, I then make sure that we've got someone within agricultural engineering when they you know when it comes to careers fairs and um, also with the interview skills um, lots of other schools just pay into a service and they will deliver that but again based on what our students want I will then bring in the sponsors that we have within our local uh, or the employers that we have within the local community to come in and make sure that those students are getting interviewed by somebody within a sector that they are interested in and um, that's the same when it comes to work experience experience and um, we're always really wanting to make sure that if students have identified an area in which they want to progress their career into then we make sure um, that students have an opportunity to go and do work experience there. Unfortunately with COVID there has been a lot of change in the way that we deliver careers here but um, when we comes to our destinations data we're still um, improving every year and we're still incredibly happy with where our students end up. Um, but yeah, uh, we also have something called a big picture tracker. Um, this is our way in linking careers into uh, careers and employer engagement into our curriculum. So we're making sure that within science and engineering, um, that there is a a reason um, for students to be learning what they are. You know, they um, get a problem from an employer, and they come and deliver that. And then at the end of like say six weeks project, they'll come in um, and sort of assess what the students have been up to. And that way the students understand that they are learning um, what they are at that time. Um, because that is something that they will be doing in the real world, um, of you know, real world of work. So we're always wanting to make sure that there is a purpose for what um, students are learning in class. And we make sure that we're linking that into their careers. Um, I'm always really proud of all the career stuff that we do here and uh, because we are quite a small school it means that even though there is only myself um, and Stephen Colby who kind of oversees what I do, um, nobody is 
is forgotten about. There's nobody that you don't know what they're kind of wanting to do when they leave school. Um, I capture their destinations a few times within the year. Um, that destinations platform that I told you about, Unifrog, I do go on that quite often and see what the students have been up to, make comments like, oh, you know, I see that you've filled in this personality quiz that I sent you. Well done. Like, why don't you start thinking about looking at different subjects that you're interested in? What careers do they link into? Um, and so we have this nice back and forth um, on our destinations platform, Unifrog, which I always think is quite, um, quite lovely. And each student feel like student um, feels like they are their progression within their careers is, is, is being watched um, and that they felt they feel like they are you know um, they are important and what they want out of their life and their education is incredibly important um, so I do love that so I just want to kind of go um, and tell you about our destinations so um, in year 13 this year we had 73% of our leavers go on to study some STEM subjects, the other 27 went on to study something else, um, but that was um, an actual increase from the previous years. So from 2019 we had 65%, 2020 71%, and then this year even though there was COVID in the way that is 73% that went on to study STEM subjects. Um, when it comes to year 11, um, this year we had 79% of our students go on to study some STEM subjects and 21% go on to study something different. Um, that again was a rise. So from 2019, we had 52%, um, 2020, 60, 64, um, and yeah, 79% this year. So even with COVID, you know, putting in the implications that it has, um, we've we've seen our students still go on to um, study STEM, STEM subjects, um, but also there be an increase every year with how many students do go on to study those. Um, there is a breakdown if you would like to see it, it will be um, on our website or you can ask to see that of, of where students went. So um, if you're wanting to see how many students went to university, um, opposed to like going on to an apprenticeship or working um, and that's with our key stage five data, you can have a look at that. But equally so in year 11, you can have a look at how many students decided to stay on um, at the at the sixth form um, and those that went on to do apprenticeships um, went on to other sixth form colleges um, or colleges. Um, but yeah, no, um, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. My name is Katie Elias and um, you can find my email address on our website. Um, alternatively, you can just have a look at our website and check out all of this data yourself. But thank you so much for your time and I hope to see your, um, your child here soon. Thank you. Bye. Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as the principal has already said, it is such a shame that you can't be with us in person today. Um, we really feel like you miss out on three amazing things by not coming here. The first is uh, seeing our fantastic facility, what we've got here and what it can offer. The second is meeting our motivated staff so we can actually talk to you in person about all of these incredible things that we're doing. And finally, meeting our students who we believe, of course, are the greatest ambassadors of what we what we try to create here in our young professional people. So thank you so much uh, for joining us online and for listening. It really isn't how we wanted to do things, but unfortunately, the way the world is at the moment, um, it was the safest, uh, safest option for us all. So my name is Steve Colby. Uh, I'm the vice principal and my responsibilities here are predominantly for the behaviour, which we like to call conduct here, uh, and also looking after our welfare, pastoral and safeguarding team. Now, fortunately, you've already heard from a big number of my pastoral team. Uh, I'm the designated safeguarding lead here, supported by our amazing welfare manager, Emma Coleman. Um, those responsibilities, of course, for safeguarding are cascaded throughout our entire staff body and the pastoral side and the way that we look after our students is a real big team, which I'm just going to briefly talk about. So again, spearheading that is myself and Emma, and then down to our pastoral leads, for which you've heard, they, they double up as the head of key stages. So you have uh, Brina Phelps for the year seven and soon to be year 18. You have Beth Holman for year nine, Sean Aldred picking up year 10 and 11, and then Charlotte Kennedy for the sixth form. But then also feeding into them and feeding upwards are really amazing crew leads and mentors. So, so we have smaller crew leads for the younger end of the school and we have slightly bigger mentor groups. But again, this whole wraparound care is what we really believe in here. And Certainly, as a pastoral lead, we've noticed that lockdown was extremely difficult for us as adults, 
Um, and the reintegration back from our students has given some real challenges for them. And, and I'm really proud of how our team and I'm really proud of the way in which our young people have engaged with us to try and sort of resolve some of these concerns and issues. And we try and have an absolute open door policy at all times so people know that they can come and talk to us when they want to. Um, our, our students, again, as I say, they are the ambassadors for what we do here. And hopefully by talking to them, you'll hear you would have heard that they're happy, that they know where to go, that the school is a safe place to be. And it's something to work really hard with. We tie that in with our conduct, as I mentioned. Our conduct here, what we talk about, we don't really like talking about behaviour. We feel that sounds a bit more like a school, that sort of schooly feel to it. We like to talk about conduct and our conduct policy, the way that we conduct ourselves, the way that we act around this building was very much built with an employer, a professional focus in mind. So we talk about misconduct, we talk about serious misconduct and we talk about praise and rewards. Our praise and reward system is fantastic. It's we try and do things a little bit different. That might be with school trips. It might be with we've had pizzas come in um, we do prizes and awards and certifications, all different things across the year group to try and keep it as inclusive as we possibly can. So these young people know that our expectation here is to be incredible and we reward that. And we have sanctions in place for those when we do. Uh, we like we are extremely proud that our safeguarding team works so hard in the background and our welfare and pastoral team. Uh, we've got some fantastic things planned for this academic year now that we're all back in the building again uh, of, of which of course we can we can explain at a later date so that was it really from me I, I am on at the Q&A session live shortly after this so if there's any questions you have for me please do feel free to pop them in the Q&A chat um, I'm again so sorry that we couldn't meet you in person but thank you so much for attending today thank you bye bye Lovely. Thank you, Mr. Colby there. Um, so hopefully that has been informative and useful for you there. There have been some questions coming through over the course of the presentation, which I'm hoping um, have been able to be answered. There were a few that we wanted to answer live, actually. And um, so I thought I will go through those now. I am also mindful that we have got a few more sort of bouncing up live as I'm speaking. So do apologise if I uh, if I keep sort of glancing away at some of the questions that are appearing there. Uh, on the side there. So uh, there was a great question about sport and about PE. So obviously as a UTC, we still do run core PE. So all students get their statutory one hour a week of PE. Um, however, we don't offer it as a GCSE. We certainly don't offer it uh, as an A-level. Uh, and sadly, we don't have the sports facilities that a normal size secondary school would have. So, um, you know, we, we do a really good job with the limited facilities we've got. Uh, but as a as an initial PE teacher, you know, I can say it doesn't have the same provision that a large school would have. So, yes, they do PE, but it certainly isn't of the same scope that a, that a big school would do. Um, you know, we don't yet have sports teams, although I know we are looking at, at whether or not we can start to put some sports teams together. Um, there's a great question about lessons being practical or written. Well, that there, there's a really nice blend of both, actually. Um, it's you can't be a technical school without making stuff, you know, and, and absolutely we've got some amazing workshops and we've got some amazing facilities, but you can't be a successful academic if you can't write and you can't answer exam questions. So there is a really nice kind of hybrid blend of those two uh, of those two measures there. And again, it depends on what options you choose. If you are going to choose um, more academic options, then obviously you're going to spend more time doing written work. Likewise, if you choose computer science, you're going to spend a lot of time on a computer programming so it very much depends on the options you choose. If you choose product design, art, again, there's going to be a weighting towards the more practical. Obviously, everybody does English, maths and science. But if you're going to choose geography, then again, there's going to be or business, maybe more of an element there to towards the written extended writing side of things. Um, a question around sixth form places. So we have 75 sixth form places in year 12. Um, and we, we have been oversubscribed in previous years. Uh, we're, we're just a little bit under this year, but obviously we have, uh, we have a large year group in year 11. So we are hoping that the majority of those uh, put their applications in. So, you know, I would just encourage you to get your applications in as soon as possible so we can look for those applications, start to have those meetings and start to look at offering places. Um, there's a wonderful question about our employer engagement um, for year 11s. And what I might do is I might hand that over to my colleague, uh, Mr. Colby, because he can talk in much more detail about employer engagement. So, Steve, hopefully you are there in the background. If you can dive in, please, and just answer that one. 
Yeah, good evening. Thank you very much, David. Um, yes, we do. We we have our employer engagement. Obviously, the, the past two years has, has been significantly challenging, not just for us um, as a UTC to bring in our sponsors, but also for, for sponsors and the policies that these organisations have to not be able to come and work with us. Um, however, as you as you may be aware from Mr. Aldridge's presentation, there's there's two two courses that run in year 11, engineering design and engineering manufacture, both of which extremely lend themselves well to uh, employer engagement. Now, the projects that we had to launch last year, so for our last year's year 10s that have now moved into year 11s, had to be designed and ran in a way that didn't use employers because we weren't sure whether we were going to get them in the building. However, um, and, and the recent times, of course, have scuppered that ever so slightly. We have managed to welcome sponsors back in the building now for years seven, years nine and years 12. And if we do manage to see that the demographic changes and the landscape changes ever so slightly, and it means that we are able to welcome our sponsors back, then we can we can put that in rather easily to the year 11 curriculum. Um, there are a lot of other added complications to our year 11 curriculum at the moment. Uh, we have to remain mindful that there's a lot of intervention sessions running to try and support the learning that they've lost over the past 18 months. So it, the focus may not be on our current year 11s. However, we will, of course, look to incorporate that. Um, the engineering design and the engineering manufacturer, like I say, can lend itself quite nicely. So if there's an opportunity that we can bring in perhaps Perkins, um, we've got a new sponsor called Resifarm who are heavily involved in chemical manufacturing and chemical engineering. Um, we're quite excited to get those in. Uh, and also Anglian Water, who've been a tremendous sponsor to us, uh, we can get them in rather quickly. So as soon as we know how the land lies, that would be more of the focus on year 11. Our curriculum plans for all of the other year groups are always ready to go. And we should hopefully see sponsors coming through more continuously. Thank you, sir. Lovely. Thank you, Steve. Um, so there's a questionnaire about uniform. So we, whilst we don't have a school uniform in the sense that we don't have a school blazer, um, and school colours and a school tie, there we, we operate what we call a, a professional business dress. So if you do go onto the school website, there's, there's all the details there. Um, but we do expect our, our students to dress smart, professional, as if they're going to work in an office for the day. But again, uh, this, is, this is all sort of publicised in our prospectus and on our website. So please go onto the website, have a look at the school business dress code. Uh, and if you have got any questions about that, then do email in and we can help, uh, we can help answer those questions. Um, so uh, there's a questionnaire around the, the, the pandemic and what's happening at the moment. Um, so again, as part of the CMAP Trust, we work very closely with the Trust and other schools in Peterborough to make sure that the measures and the mitigations that we are putting in place at the UTC are, are those that are matched and consistent across the, uh, the borough and also across the Trust. So there is a, a very detailed and thorough risk assessment that we review every two weeks. And again, that is shared with, with experts and professionals within the Trust looking at the mitigations we've got in place. So at the moment, we have reintroduced face masks for communal spaces, corridors, uh, not for classrooms. Uh, uh, we are doing meetings like this virtually. Um, we've got um, boxes and boxes of masks at the school for students that forgot. Uh, there was still hand sanitizer all around the building for students that want to, uh, to use that. And again, it is part of that regular educating and re-educating students about safe working practices keeping themselves um, keeping their hands clean, keeping themselves safe. So, um, you know, the pandemic certainly hasn't gone away. Uh, and if you do get to visit the school, you can you can sense that from the, the way that we are working as a school. Uh, there, there are other things happening and lots of things that, that school are doing to keep students and staff safe. Um, but hopefully that does answer that question there for you. Uh, just looking back down the list, there's a few more that I'd spotted. There's a few questions about sort of catchment and, and deadlines and timelines. Um, so there, there isn't a, a set catchment for the UTC. However, there are windows of application. So I would encourage you um, to get your applications in soon, uh, because what we will do is, is we'll meet the, the applicants uh, and places will be offered. And then every time a window closes, we then open again a second window. So if we do get to the final window and we find ourselves oversubscribed, then those people applying in that final window, then they will be subject to uh, an oversubscription criteria, which does include um, distance from school. So if you are getting your applications in early, then you stand more of a chance of getting a place secured. If you do leave it till the very, very end of the academic year, then there's a chance that you will be subjected to the oversubscription criteria. Um, all students do homework. There, there's a question about homework. So there is an expectation for students to do home learning. Um, uh, uh, that is easier explained, again, by looking at the website and looking at the homework policy. 
uh, because again that's that's very different for the different year groups obviously running expeditionary learning in year seven and what will be year eight uh, the way that they learn at home is very different to an a-level student likewise the amount of time we expect a student to spend doing home study and home learning is very different depending on the on the year group that they're in um, that said, the school is open uh, to students till about five o'clock, quarter past five every single day. Uh, and there are you know, many computer suites. So we have a lot of students actually will stay behind and will do their homework on school site. Um, they find that the access to the machines is far easier and students that are either getting the college buses or just feel like it's easier just at the end of the day to stay on site for an hour, do an hour's homework every single day. That way, when they get home, uh, they can they can de-stress and they can down tools. Um, class sizes uh, very much depends on the year group. So obviously, if we're talking about year seven and year eight, um, we have three groups of 20 students. As we move into years nine, 10 and 11, they go to more typical class sizes. So it very much depends on the ability of the children. Um, the more able sets tend to be mid to high 20s. Uh, the middle ability sets tend to be mid to low 20s. Uh, and some of the lower ability sets you'll find are just sub 20. So, you know, you might find about 16 or 17 students in some of our lower ability sets, but you might find 26, 27 in some of our higher ability sets. Obviously, when it comes to the option subjects, it very much depends on how many students pick those. However, the, the practical, the technical subjects, we do try and limit that at very, very low 20s. Moving into the sixth form, class sizes vary from half a dozen up to about 15, 16 in some of the more popular courses. But you will find class sizes here typically are slightly smaller than the normal secondary schools, but you certainly won't find class sizes, certainly in years 9, 10, 11 of six or seven. You know, at, at the very minimum, you're going to get class sizes of about 16, 17, but they may go up to as high as 25, 26, 27, depending on the ability of those students. Um, We've had a number of questions come through around SEN and, and EHCPs. What I will say with questions regarding that, please do email in the school because often the, the, the specifics are of each individual child is something that is much better discussed face to face. And um, so I, I have a Senko and a Deputy Senko at my school uh, and both of those colleagues will be more than happy to have those uh, telephone conversations with parents, certainly when it's regarding SEN children, because again, they're, Obviously, the, it's so personal and specific to each individual child. And, um, you know, I wouldn't want to give a generic response, but we do have a Senko. We do have a Deputy Senko. We have a team of learning support assistants. Uh, and, and again, this is supported by the, uh, the trust as well. So, you know, that there is a solid um, SEN team um, and, and everything that goes with that happens at the school. But again, if you can, if you can email the, the info at gputc.org, and they will be able to direct your email to, to the Senko, the Deputy Senko, and they'll be able to call you back. Um, just looking through to see what else we have not answered yet. Excuse me for a second. Um, the, the admissions meetings, yes, they are absolutely like job interviews, and, and that is fundamental to the way we, we want to run the organisation. So, you know, you fill in an application form, just like you would if you were applying for a job. Um, they're... There, there are no trick questions in these interviews. First and foremost, we're trying to make sure that the, the young person in the family absolutely understands what the UTC is about. Um, and then we will look to see whether or not they, we consider them to be a suitable candidate. If they are passionate around STEM subjects and if they've got a passion in pursuing a career in STEM subjects, then they are absolutely the right student for this school. If they want to be a professional football player or they want to go into careers in dance, drama and um, history, or other subjects that we don't offer, then at that point, it's, a, it's an opportunity to have that conversation around, is this really the right career path? Is this really the right curriculum for, for this child? So it's very much about you know, fact finding, finding out a little bit more about their, their, their passions and their interests. Uh, but again, that there is no, um, there's no trick questions and it's quite a pleasant experience actually. So there's nothing to be worried about. Uh, the one-to-one -one tours that someone's asked a question about, one-to-one -one tours are, are in person. So again, we will do those in a, in, a, in a safe manner and at a time that suits you. But again, we do ask that uh, people that arrive do wear face masks uh, because as we are moving around the building, you will be coming into contact with other people on corridors. So we do ask if you are coming in for a, uh, a, a, a live tour, a one-to-one -one tour, that you do come with a mask. Um, questionnaire about welding. Uh, no, it's not something we do. So 
Uh, again, one of the misconceptions that, that we try hard to sort of make people aware of is the difference between things like construction and mechanics um, and engineering. So, you know, we, we see engineering as being very different to construction and mechanics. If they are something that your child is interested in, then we absolutely advise going over the road to our educational partners, Peterborough College, that have a fantastic uh, provision there for, for what we would call that kind of more hands-on um, practical approaches to subjects like that. Um, that includes sort of electrician work, plumbing, bricklaying, welding, mechanics, car mechanics. Peterborough College have a fantastic provision for that and we will, we will regularly um, encourage students to, to look at their curriculum as well. Um, Final question I can see there is, is details of the BTEC engineering course. Uh, again, look at the school website um, or use the email info at gputc.org. Uh, and again, we can direct you towards the, the head of engineering or the head of sixth form who can give you far more detail um, about that particular course. Looking through the questions. Looks like that is all of the questions. Just checking my list. There's no more that I've seen um, flagged up there. So if we don't have any more questions come through just in the next few seconds or so, um, I will thank you kindly and then we will end our open evening. Uh, again, do use the email address info at gputc.org um, and then we can direct your question to the most relevant person if needs be. Uh, and likewise, if you're keeping an eye on the, on the chat function at the bottom there, um, my, my marketing lead is putting up links to, to the various things that you can access, the application forms. Uh, and likewise, if you are wanting a tour, again, do drop us an email and we can surely sort that out. Um, uh, thank you. There's, there's a notification the application isn't working. I'll make sure my uh, marketing lead uh, sorts that out um, ASAP. OK, if there aren't any more questions, then I will uh, bid you a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for, for, for logging in and hopefully uh, I look forward to, uh, to lots of applications and meeting you in person in the very near future. So do have a wonderful evening. Take care uh, and good night.